So you have a Laravel application and you have a database and you wanna get some kind of data in here. So let's talk about seeding databases in Laravel. So first of all, if we go to the database folder here and we go to seeders, we have a default database seeder class that is set up for us out of the box. And this contains a single run method. Underneath this method, we can add in functions and functionality to get data into our database. So let's go ahead and remove these commented lines out first. And the easiest way to get data into a database is to just create a new model. So if we wanted to, inside of this database, we could say user, create, and provide it attributes to create this user. So now in order to actually run this function, we can open up a terminal, and then navigating to the root of our application, we can run php artisan db seed. And what that has done is gone through our database seeder class and ran anything inside of this run function, which means that we should have a new user created with the name of Andrew. We can go ahead and verify that by opening up our database. And we can see we have a new user with the name of Andrew and the email andrew at example.com. So our user was added in here successfully. And this works fine, but what if we wanted to create three users or 10 users? You're not going to want to copy this method and use it again and again and again and again. So what Laravel provides to us is a way to generate these models on the fly and add in more than one at a time. And those are called factories. So if we exit out of here, we can see underneath our database directory, we have a factories directory as well and a default user factory class provided to us. So scrolling down in this, we have a method called definition, which returns back an array. This returned array contains attributes that models need to be created. So in our database seeder, this user create method that we had just used needed the name, email, and password attributes. And those are provided to us in this returned array under the definition method of a factory class. So we have a name, email, and password, and it is also filling in the remember token and email verified at attributes, which are nullable, but good to have. And this is using something called the faker library in PHP, which generates fake but believable looking values for specific attributes throughout your PHP code. So it's generating us a name, an email address, and then the rest of the values are created by either a date or a hard-coded in string. And in a factory, we don't have to abide by a unique attribute each time. So when this is ran, a unique name will be created each time. But if we wanted the same name to be used in our factory, we could just specify that name out that we wanted to. So if every name we wanted to be Andrew Schmelian, we could have every model created with this factory as my name. And how does that actually correspond to a seeder? So if we go back into our database seeder class, we can just call the factory method on the user model. So we can say user factory and create. So what that'll do is generate a new user with that factory class that we just saw, and then pipe that into the create method, which actually commits that data into the database. So opening up our terminal again, if we run php artisan db seed one more time, it seeds the database again, and we can look into the database itself, and verify that we have a new user with a fake name, a fake email address, and the email verified at and remember token attributes filled in from that factory class. But again, this is happening one at a time. So what if we wanted to create 10 users at a time? You would just pass in the number of users or models in general you want to create into the factory method argument. So if we do user factory 10 and run dbc again, we get 10 users created and put in the database. But what if we aren't using a ready-made factory and model that was given to us in the Laravel application? Let's create a new model and seed it as well. So in our terminal, we can say php artisan make model, and we will call this comment, and we'll pass in the migration flag so our migration is created as well. Let's go ahead and open up that comment file. And out of the box, Laravel includes this has factory trait on all new models, which means that you're able to use that factory method that we saw in the database seeder class with these models that are created. If this is missing or you remove it, you are unable to use factories associated with that model. So we'll keep this intact. 
Now, if we open up our create comments table database migration, let's add in some fields here that we might need. Okay, so now if I want to create uh, 10 comments associated with this particular model, I can say, all right, comment factory 10 create except it's not that easy yet because I haven't created the comment factory class. You can see underneath factories, we just have the user factory. Going back into our terminal, we can create that factory class by saying PHP artisan make factory, comment factory, and then pass in the model associated with it. So let's open up that comment factory class. And for the definition, we have a blank array starting out. So this expects us to fill in the attributes associated with our comment model. And we just added the two into our migration, which was an author name, which we can use at PHP Faker library with the fake global method. And we'll have it generate a name for us. And the body we will call fake uh, paragraph. So that should give us a decent amount of text. Okay, so now. Everything should be connected and working as expected. So let's go ahead and comment out the user factory. So when we run the DB seed, we're just getting the comments added in. All right, first uh, I'll have to run PHP artisan migrate. So we get that comments table added in there and then PHP artisan DB seed. All right, so it seeded the database successfully. Let's verify that our comments were added in. So we have a new table here, comments, and we can see 10 of them were added in as expected with the names and the bodies generated from that faker library. And so this works out pretty well, but let's say that my application might be a little bit more complex and I wanna specify when to run a seeder for users and when to run a seeder for comments. So instead of having some kind of conditional here or having to comment out these different lines, it'd be great if I could specify a specific seeder just for users or just for comments and we can actually do that. So if we open up our terminal one more time, we can run PHP artisan make seeder, and we'll call this comment seeder. And let's create another one for user seeder. So now we have two new classes in here underneath this seeders folder. We have a comment seeder and we have a user seeder. And what we can do is actually go back to our database seeder class and we can remove these calls here and put them in their appropriate places. So in the user seeder, we have the user factory to create 10. And in the comment seeder, we have the comment factory that creates 10. Okay, so now our DB seeder class is empty. And if we go into our terminal and run PHP artisan DB seed, we see that it says it's seeded the database, but opening up the actual database and refreshing, we don't have 10 new comments and we don't have 10 new users. Instead, what we have to do is actually specify the class that we want to seed that database. So if we say, all right, the class is user seeder, now it seeds the database with 10 new users, but not 10 new comments. But there might be a case where you do want to run both at the same time. And so in our main database seeder class, we could just include both of these factory creates again but that's copying the code in two different places. So if we want to change the default number of the users that are created during a seed, we'd have to update it in both this class as well as the user seeder class. Instead, what we can do is remove both of these and use this call. This takes in an array of seeder classes that are called whenever the main DB seed command is used in Artisan. So we can say, all right, whenever DB seed is ran, I want the user seeder method called, or the user seeder class called, and the comment seeder class called. So this will automatically know to take both of these classes and fire off the run method inside each of them. So now if I go back to our terminal and I run PHP artisan db seed without any class option after it, we can actually get an output of the seeders that were ran. So we can tell all right, the user seeder was ran and the comment seeder was ran. And we can verify that by going back in the database and seeing that 10 new comments were created and 10 new users were created. The last thing that I want to discuss is what happens if I need to seed a model that is associated with another model. So for instance, I'm going to create a post model real quick. 
Okay, so I created a post model and it has a relationship to a user. So each post belongs to a user and each user model has many posts. And then this is the table that was created for it and the attributes associated with this particular model. I also went ahead and created a post factory for this model. So let's go ahead and fill in some attributes. So for the user ID, let's leave that blank for now. For the title, we need a fake title. And for the body, we'll do another fake paragraph. Actually, I think title is for like job titles. So let's just do sentence. Okay, so for the user ID, what is a quick and dirty way to do this is if you know how many users you would have in your table, you can just do something like RAND between one and 10. And if I do have at least 10 users that I'm seeding my database table with, then a user will be associated with any post that's created with this factory. But if that number is generated randomly, what I'd like to do is be able to ensure that I'm creating a post with a user that actually exists. So what I can actually do is say, all right, user in random order, and I want the first ID to come back. So I've created a post seeder as well for this model, and it creates just one single instance of this model and saves in the database to make sure that everything is working as expected. So let's go ahead and open up our terminal and run PHP artisan DB seed class post seeder. Okay, we see it's been seeded successfully. Let's go ahead and open it up and see what it created. Okay, so we have a post table and we have a filled out row, including a user ID that is 26 that does exist here. So we are actually pulling in a user that exists and associating with a post during each seed. Now this works out well for users that already exist in the database, but let's say you are seeding a model that has a relationship to a model that doesn't yet exist. Instead, what we can do is actually call the factory method that we've already been using in the seeder classes. We want just a single factory, and we tack on the create method to actually store it in the database. Now this actually returns back that model instance, so we can just tack on the ID attribute to return the ID back and add it into our user underscore ID attribute in this definition. Now if we go ahead and run that same seed command, we see the database was seeded and refreshing the post table, we now have a user ID of 33, which is the newest user created. So this user was created at the same time this post was created and the two were automatically associated with each other. So yeah, I think that just about covers all of database seeding with Laravel. If you have any questions about this, please feel free to reach out to me in the comments or on my Twitter linked below. Thanks for watching.